With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey with bipartisan support on a vote of 48 to 19. The Senate passed a comprehensive public safety bill that would support law enforcement, strengthen penalties for crimes and improve transparency and accountability for the public. Here are some highlights. I think there's a time that we have to begin to not look at ourselves as bureaucrats or people who spend a lot of money on even one more agency or, or department. We have to look out at our public and begin to realize that at this very moment, we are at a critical stage. We're at a critical stage with increased violent crime. And I hope and I pray we aren't doing business as usual by just funding another agency or development. We are at a crisis moment with our law enforcement. They've been denigrated for quite a few years. A few of them, a small few of them, deserve that. But the entire profession does not. And we need to adequately resource that profession. And we need to hold that profession up, as Senator Kwadzinski was mentioning, of the high regard that we should have but that high regard has to be earned as well. But our partnership in that, our partnership in, the, in that is that we have to adequately fund and resource that profession. We are taking a little different approach and it's because of the storm that's around us in our local neighborhoods, the shootings, the children that are getting shot by wayward gunfire. We are at a crisis right now, and we've been living that crisis for over three and a half years. It preceded the George Floyd death. And nevertheless, it keeps rising, and it keeps rising. Law enforcement needs to be adequately resourced. They've been begging for our help, and it's time that we assert that degree of professionalism that we expect, but at the very same time fund that necessary requirement that the very purpose of government written into our state constitution is the safety of our citizens. That's what this bill is about. And I'm asking you all to stop doing business as usual, pause a little bit on building departments and agencies, and fund law enforcement so our children and our families can once again be safe in the state of Minnesota. The Senate DFL proposals will reduce crime today and prevent crime tomorrow by using smart, proven tools to do so. Our bill does more than the bill before us for a vote right now. The majority's tax bill spends $240 million in tax breaks per year to people earning over $250,000 per year. That alone is more than they're spending on public safety in this bill. And it's more than enough to pay for the Senate DFL's initiatives. And yes, as we've been told by the majority, this is a non-budget year. But the majority is spending a lot of money in this non-budget year, too. It's just in the tax bill, not in the bill to prevent crime. It's about a matter of priorities as to how we spend this money. The majority gives it to the rich. We give it, or we give more of it, to the criminal justice system. Now, this bill does some good things. It funds courts and the public defenders. It has some money for youth intervention programs, although only half of what they need, all they need is another $5 million. We're not giving it to them in this bill. This bill prevents doxing. It increases penalties for fentanyl now that um, our side has successfully initiated the addition of that amendment to this bill. And it provides money for recruiting and retaining police officers, which I think there's fairly broad consensus that we need in order to address crime. I fully agree that we need more cops on the street and more cops investigating. We also need good community trust so the community will share information that will help solve these crimes. 
There's not much in this bill to address police accountability. But this bill also has some real clunkers that are feel-good but ineffective proposals. These proposals may make some people feel safer while not actually making them safer. Buyer beware. There being 48 ayes and, 40, uh, and 19 nays, Senate file 2673 as amended does pass as title agreed to. To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit our website, www.senate.mn/media.